Okay, who is Okine? Actually, we are 70 people dedicated to make cities more accessible through different works. But we started 29 years ago to develop the first accessible pedestrian signals in France. And the beginning of the story was that we, we founded some push button at that time in different countries, and I will come back on this point. But as designers, we thought that it was quite weird to ask blind and visually impaired people to find a push button on a pole and to press it. If you think in terms of design, it's, from our point of view, something a bit weird. So from the very beginning, we said, okay, maybe we should put this push button in the pocket of the users so they don't have to find this push button anymore. Yes. Um, we, uh, we, we are doing copywriting on accessibility, smart, inclusive cities. It's all our team that writes those articles about those topics. Maybe that will interest you. The webzine is called Inclusive City Makers because smart city is good, but smart city is just a mean. What is the objective? One of the objectives for us is inclusive smart cities. How can we provide the same experience of our complex cities for people with disabilities. Can we change the slide, please? Um, and I've been working in this field for a long time as an accessibility consultant, and today we use technologies. I work for the ISO as an expert, and I've uh, been doing a lot of conference about how the new technologies can improve the mobility of people with disabilities. Can we change the slide, please? And that's why we developed what I will call the third generation of accessible pedestrian signals. Can you change the slide? I'll have a, I have a lot of it. So let's go back, please, again. Let's go back in the past. I will go quickly to, uh, through uh, the history, uh, but it's always interesting to understand where these systems come from. The first uh, pedestrian signal has been implemented in England in 1868, it was working with gas. It was quite a bit dangerous. Uh, and then it has been developed till uh, 1914. If you can click again, please. Uh, the first electrical signals has been implemented in the US in 1914 uh, to help people to cross those crazy streets full of horses, new cars, and whatever. It was quite dangerous. And what is interesting is in that this first, this very first electrical pedestrian signals was with red and green, and also with sound to help people to understand how it was working. But then it disappeared because of noise pollution. So maybe you are, fa you are familiar uh, with the first system that has been implemented first in Japan, and it came in uh, the US in the mid 70s. It was what we call the chirps and the cuckoo. It was a permanent sound that gave birds, birds sound permanently on the walk or the, gray, the green signal. So it was good, but it was not really helpful. It was creating noise pollution. Sometimes you had real birds and do you have to cross the street? So the system was not so efficient. Then, in the early 90s, yes, we founded and has been widely implemented what you can find almost everywhere, which, which are push buttons. Uh, now come back, please. So those push buttons can deliver a good service. But as I said, because you ask people, blind people, to find the push button, they had this, it's working now, I hope so. Let's try it. Hard push, okay, I'll try it. Hard push, but still not working. Okay, um, so you had this push button, like this one, not working so well. This is real life. Um, and because the blind people can't find those push buttons, they had to add a locator tone. 
this little beep, 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 that works all day long to help those visually impaired people to find the push button. And then they push it and they have a sound usually coming on the walk signal. Uh, the good point is that it helps them, really. Uh, but you had to find it, so locator tone, so it creates noise pollution. So in many cities I've seen, in Croatia, in many cities in the world, the neighborhood asks to stop those systems. Why it is working all day long and not only when the people that need it? Question mark. Again, it's a question of design. So you also have, of course, hygienic touching a, a push button in the street is not so, you know, you don't have to do it, but when they have, it's not so good. When you live in, uh, let's say, North country like Canada, during winter, it's not so easy with the gloves. I've been in the Middle East, in Dubai, when it's 40 degrees, or Saudi Arabia, you don't want to touch something that is in metal. Today you have the COVID, of course, this is something that uh, we, we will have to deal with. And usually the contents are quite low. So, yes, if you can change the slide. What about France? I said in 1993, we started working on this remote activation APS. So we put the push button in the pocket of the users. So when they arrive close to the intersection, they push the button and it will automatically activate the voice information from the crossing. This system has been developed quite widely. It's an obligation, it's on mandatory in France. We installed about 250,000 units. So almost all the cities are equipped. The remote control are given for free by the cities when you are visually impaired. So almost all the users have this little remote control. But of course, today uh, we developed some apps and the visually impaired people can activate those system with a simple smartphone app. I will come back on it. One of the weakness of this system in France, which has been developed in the 90s, is that it, use, it uses radio frequency. So when you push the button, it will activate all the crossings around you. This is the most important weakness of this system developed in the 90s. Can you switch the slide, please? Based on all this experience, we developed a third generation of APS, and we won a call for innovation for New York City in 2019. Uh, among about 45 worldwide companies, the call for innovation was how to enhance the mobility of visually impaired people and how to help them to cross the street safely and to bring added value for the city of New York and all its inhabitants and all the tourists. So please. So basically, what is a beacon? It's an APS that is installed on the pole and you can trigger it with a little remote control and the city of New York asks for such a device for social inclusion. Not all the visually impaired people can have a smartphone. You can activate it with different languages and the city can distribute this uh, remote control. Of course, there is iPhone and Android apps that the users can download for free. And then I will explain the user experience. But of course, because accessibility is also a cultural thing, we can plug our system to existing push buttons with most of the existing push button. So the users can choose the way to activate the system. Also, we can provide setting up for the, the city and we have an online back office to do uh, maintenance and I will answer any question about it. So what is the use case? You understand the use case with push button. You have this little beep, 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 beep. You find the button, you push on it and then you have tack, 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 you cross the street, okay. The first use case is with the smartphone app. So the blind people can download the app, put it in the pocket, put a earphone and start moving in the street. When they will reach, arrive, close by an intersection, they will have a vibration, a notification, and automatically they will have the names of the streets around them. So here, for example, it's 7th Avenue and 23rd Street. 
So they know exactly where they are with VoiceOver, which is the screen reader of the app. It's perfectly accessible for visually impaired people. They have the name of the street. Then they can select easily the street they want to cross and only the street they want to cross. So here, for example, they select one street. That was good. And the two sides of the street will be automatically activated, triggered. So it's what we call a sound corridor. They have a lighthouse, let's say, to reach the other side of the street automatically because it's one of the main issues for them it's to cross wide streets very easily. And they have the capacity also with the app to stop the message when they arrive to the other side, select the second street and cross again very smoothly, easily. And they don't need to take their smartphone on hand. They can just use the plus, minus and play button to select the crossing and to activate it. Very easy. I hope it's clear. Now we will switch to the use case with the little remote control. This is a Bluetooth remote control. So we don't have any issue with local frequency, 860 megahertz, 433, whatever. It's Bluetooth and it's clever. So with this little remote control, you just turn it on. Once again, you put it in the pocket. They start moving in cities. When they will arrive close to the intersection, the remote control will vibrate, will have a light and a beep. So they know that they are close to an intersection. They can push the button once and then they will have what we call the presentation message. So they will hear 6th Avenue, 23rd Street. So once again, they get the information where they are and they just have to click again on the name of the street they want to reach with the same button, 1st, 7th Avenue, yes, click again, and then the two sides of the street will be automatically activated. Very easy. Once again, with this remote control, they can stop the messages when they reach the other side of the street, activate the second crossing if they want to go to the opposite side. Very fluent, very smooth experience. Something that was interesting for New York City was also that we have the capacity to embed five languages on the remote or the smartphone app. So they were interested to be able to give information in Spanish, in English, maybe in Chinese, different languages according to the local communities. Yes, you can switch. So we met a first installation in Manhattan and uh, uh, with the DOT of New York. There have been many testings in their shop. Everything was fine. It was working with the local material. And uh, New York University, the uh, Tenden School of Engineering, organized user testing by the end of 2019. And uh, we had 29 users. You can change the slide. 29 volunteers from different associations, different communities that came. It was the first time they was using a remote activation on demand APS that don't produce sound when they don't need. It just talk when they need, then it stopped. And the, the first feedback of those uh, training sessions were very, um, very good from the users and it was the first version of the remote control only that has been tested. Meanwhile, we developed this new remote control. We um, improved the user experience for the, the, the smartphone app. It was supposed to be a second round of user testing during the, the spring 2020. But as you know, in March 2020, something happened in the world. Everything stopped. Uh, the borders of the US were closed for 18 months. So um, I'm very glad to say that uh, within one month, uh, we will have a second round of user testing with this new remote control and the smartphone app. Maybe you know that New York City uh, has lost um, 
because they, they have been attacked by association for discrimination. So they lost uh, at the court and they have to accelerate the implementation of accessible pedestrian signal in their city. And they are just trying to define the good features for the next generation of New York and to improve for the users, of course, but also for the city, for the maintenance, the cost of a crossing. One of the issues for New York City is that a crossing costs about $45,000 for an intersection for visually impaired people. So if they want to deploy the system widely, uh, they must uh, make a cost lower. So this is what we are doing. I'll be glad, of course, to answer any question. If you want to test the system in real life, we didn't have the chance to bring the polls here. We have a booth, all five, uh, booth 305, and you will have the capacity to test this with a smartphone app, with the, this little remote control, and you will understand directly. One of the key points of the solution is also that we are specialists of uh, high quality sound because we implemented such system in metro stations also uh, in different shops in France. Only in the metro of Paris, for example, we installed 2000 boxes like this one that works with the same trigger to give voice information to the users. And we can reach 91 decibels with a very high voice quality to give many information to the users of the city. So this is one of the issues we faced. Thank you. Please, I'm open to any question. I hope it was a clear presentation.